Today, I'll talk about absolute dating techniques that have been used for dating early human fossils. I'll divide absolute dating techniques into two groups, depending on how, how far back each can date. Today's topic, paleontological dating techniques, those that can date early human sites with fossils one million years old and older, versus archeological dating techniques, that is, dating techniques that can date more recent archeological sites without fossils. Let's start with some basic vocabulary. A paleoanthropologist is a type of biological anthropologist who studies the fossil record of early humans and their primate relatives. An archeologist studies human behavior through material remains. In other words, archeologists study trash or what's left of structures and other kinds of remains like that. Fossils are rocks. They may be mineralized organic remains, such as bones turned to rock, or they may be impressions, such as footprints. A fossil locality is a place where fossils are found. An archeological site is a place where human activity took place whether or not you've ever found it. Here we are at a site in Central South Carolina in June of 2020. An artifact is an object made, used, or altered by humans. On the left, you see a portion of a broken ceramic pot, and on the right, a small triangular stone point, an arrowhead. The absolute dating techniques I'll talk about that are good for dating early human fossil locales include three radiometric techniques, potassium argon, argon argon, and uranium lead, as well as geomagnetic polarity, fission track, and electron spin resonance. Let's begin with the radiometric techniques, and I'll start with potassium argon or argon argon. This sort of dating is based on the fact that a radioactive isotope decays at a known rate, hence why we call it a radiometric dating technique. You can measure the ratio of that isotope to its decayed state and figure out when the isotope began to degrade. In the case of volcanic rocks, you can date when the volcano erupted forming that rock. Isotopes are atoms of the same element that have different numbers of neutrons and protons in their nuclei. So the isotopic number refers to the combined number of protons and neutrons. For example, carbon-12 has six protons and six neutrons. Six plus six equals 12. Whereas carbon-13 has six protons and seven neutrons. Both carbon-12 and carbon-13 are stable isotopes. Carbon-14, on the other hand, is a radioactive isotope. It has six protons and eight neutrons. Being radioactive, it will decay through time. When volcanic rocks first harden from molten material, they trap variations, or isotopes, of radioactive atoms in their structure. And over millions of years, the radioactive isotopes slowly break down at a steady clock-like and unique rate into a different isotope. That rate is stated as a half-life, which refers to how many years it would take for half the material de to decay, so that the ratio becomes 50-50. In potassium-argon dating, potassium degrades to argon gas. The half-life is 1.3 billion years, this technique can date rock that is 100,000 years or older. You must have a rock that's created by a volcano, and the tough, solidified ash is a very good material to use for this type of dating. It dates when the rock was formed, and in the case of tough, when the volcano erupted. It gives you a range of years of when the volcano erupted and formed the tuff. Well, how can KAR or potassium argon dating help us date fossils? <clears throat> fossils are mineralized bone, so they're not made when a volcano erupts. 
Well, actually, we combine the law of superposition with the absolute date from potassium argon dating. Let's say, for example, that a volcano erupted and left a layer of ash. We'll call this layer A. Afterwards, humans lived on that spot and died there, and their bones became fossilized. Later, another layer of volcanic ash was laid down by a second eruption. Given the law of superposition, the fossil human um, fossils must be younger than the dated layer A, the first layer of ash, but older than or previous to the dated layer B. And so by dating the two layers of volcanic ash, we get an age bracket for the fossil humans in between. Uranium lead dating is a little bit more complicated because we have two different half-lives depending on the isotopic number of the uranium. But it can date rocks that forms and crystallize from about 1 million years to over 4.5 billion years ago. It's usually used on zircon, which is a mineral found in igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary rocks. Let's turn now to geomagnetic polarity dating. This is useful in measuring minerals between 780,000 and 200 million years old in places where you don't have volcanic eruptions. This method dates objects by measuring the reversals of the north and south magnetic poles. Yes, through time, the North Pole has moved to the South and the South Pole has moved to the North. The source of the magnetic field is the iron-rich liquid outer core of the Earth. In the last 10 million years or so, there have been, on average, four or five reversals per million years. But at other times in Earth's history, for example, during the Cretaceous era, there have been much longer periods when no reversals occurred. So reversals are not predictable and are certainly not periodic in nature. The last of these major reversals occurred about 780,000 years ago. Now, although we haven't had a, a polarity reversal since then, the poles do wander around in between these larger flips. So when many rocks form, their grains will point north. For example, when igneous rocks form, when the lava cools, the, the grain of the hardening rock will point north. So geomagnetic polarity dating is a good way to date mid-oceanic ridge spreading, for example. A third type of absolute dating good for fossil human sites is fission track dating. This can date objects between 1,000 years old and 1 billion years old. It requires a high uranium mineral, normally apatite or zircon. It's based on the radiation damage, the tracks, due to spontaneous fission of uranium-238. Here's an example of a clear mineral showing these fission tracks. By determining the number of tracks present and the amount of uranium present in the grain, it is possible to calculate how long it took to produce the number of tracks preserved. And the fourth type of absolute dating for fossil human sites that we'll talk about today is electron spin resonance, or ESR. It can date objects between 1,000 years old to 3 million years old. And it's used also on uranium bearing materials in which uranium has been absorbed from outside sources. It can be used on teeth, which is a good thing because teeth are the hardest bone in the human body and the most likely fossil remain of humans to be found. But it can also be used on carbonates such as speleothems and mollusk shells. It works on a principle similar to the principle used in luminescence dating. That is, dating is based on measurement of the amount of light released upon either thermal, that is heating, or optical stimulation. 
The light signal that you get indicates the radiation dose that accumulated in these materials through time. So the absolute dating techniques that we've covered today include radiometric techniques, and I mentioned potassium argon, argon argon, or uranium lead dating. These can date objects 100,000 years old or older. And a particularly good object to date, especially with potassium argon dating, is volcanic tuff. That is solidified volcanic ash. Geomagnetic polarity dating can date between 780,000 years ago to 200 million years ago. And in these rocks, we can record the magnetic direction of when the North Pole moved to the South Pole and the South Pole moved to the North Pole. So complete reversal of poles on Earth. Fission track dating can date between 1,000 years ago to 1 billion years ago using minerals such as apatite and zircon. An electron spin residence can date between 1,000 years ago to 3 million years ago. And it can be used on things that grow like tooth enamel or shell or speleothems.